I am uh, Professor Paul Downs, Professor of Psychology of Education and Director of the Educational Disadvantage Centre at the Institute of Education in Dublin City University. I think a, a major concern is the lethal cocktail of poverty and the pandemic, post-pandemic impact. We see uh, from PISA 2018 already a very concerning uh, deterioration in basic skill scores across reading, maths and science for uh, over one in five uh, students across Europe. It's very much a, a holistic approach, emphasising success as the well-being and social and personal development of our children and young people, developing social and personal competencies, uh, you know, self-awareness. And of course, at that level, uh, bullying prevention comes into this because uh, bullying is the antithesis of uh, healthy communication. Certainly the one key la layer for the new initiative is a message to, to member states to integrate early school leaving and bullying prevention strategies. And here there have been a, there's a range of layers added to the 2011 Council recommendation. This includes, I think, a stronger focus on differentiation of need to distinguish universal approaches for strategies from uh, targeted group approaches, from individual intensive support. So the differentiation angle uh, is a key difference. There's also, I think, a recognition of a whole school approach that was not in the 2011 approach, that we need to see schools as systems, systems of relationships, of, of strategic interventions, uh, as well as, of course, the multidisciplinary teams in and around schools, the cross-sectoral aspect to bring together key sectors. So I think some, um, you know, obvious strategies at the prevention level that, that would need to be firmly embedded and would, which would have a good evidence base behind them would be things, for example, such as home book uh, programs targeting uh, families in high poverty to ensure there is good reading resources uh, in the homes, to, to inculcate a love of reading that is central, not only, I think, to, to reading proficiency, but of course, to all academic attainment. Uh, regarding the level then of intervention, uh, Obvious ones would be, for example, there's a Luxembourg model of having um, language um, mediators, um, you know, uh, across, I think in, in their example, they have 37 different languages where they would have mediators uh, for those, you know, to, to cope with the, the, with the uh, to address the language issue. Regarding the compensation aspect, um, I, I think there, there are clear lessons in compensatory education even for the, for the mainstream system. These include things such as um, public recognition of achievement through awards and, um, and ceremonies to recognise achievement. This is something that would cost nothing and which could be brought much more into the mainstream system. I think an obvious uh, opportunity here is the whole area of restorative practice, which is a range of fairly simple questioning and communication approaches. And it's to be distinguished from restorative justice, which is a very different uh, initiative. But restorative practice in schools uh, is an inexpensive, simple, yet very nuanced and focused way of improving the communicative culture in a school and um, through open questions that help foster empathy and perspective taking, not only in students, but also in staff. Whole, whole school uh, system approaches need to hear the voices of students and parents, but also uh, especially um, marginalised and, uh, and those students at risk of exclusion to hear their concerns with the school system. And of course, the multidisciplinary team dimension then is about recognising that we are broadening our conception of school. School is not only about teachers and students and pupils. Uh, school is also a, a site where a range of other uh, key professionals can engage with the, the wider holistic needs supporting our children and young people.